The episode opens with the main six on their way to Canterlot to perform in the annual Hearthswarming Eve pageant. This tells the story of how Equestria was originally founded. Long ago, before Celestia and Luna ruled the land, and presumably before Discord as well, we see the three pony species, or tribes, all living separately, and they're heavily distrusting of each other. The only reason they interact at all is out of necessity, as each tribe performs a function that's required for the others to survive. The Earth ponies grow the food, the Pegasi control the weather, and the unicorns use their magic to raise the sun and the moon. But one day, a mysterious and unrelenting snowstorm covers the land, driving all three tribes to the brink of freezing and starving to death. This requires a meeting between the three tribal leaders, Princess Platinum of the Unicorns, Commander Hurricane of the Pegasi, and Chancellor Puddinghead of the Earth Ponies. But, rather than try to solve anything, they immediately jump down each other's throats. The Earth Ponies are accused of not sharing any food, but they can't grow any food because of the weather, and naturally they blame the Pegasi. But the Pegasi swear that they have nothing to do with it, that it must be the Unicorns using their magic. As we watch the characters' interactions, we get a sense of their different cultures and how they view each other. The unicorns are the most regal of the three, but they're also seen as being entitled and snobbish. The Pegasi see themselves as a race of warriors, so they have a reputation for being brutish thugs. And meanwhile, the earth ponies are just simple folk who tend to the crops and other forms of manual labor, so they're often labeled as being stupid. And what's interesting is that there are signs that these stereotypes persist in the present day. In Sweet and Elite, we see unicorns in Canterlot looking down on an earth pony who might as well be named Toe Mater for as subtle as this reference is, and in several episodes we see that Fluttershy is practically an outcast among her own kind for being weak and timid. Back to the story though, the three leaders can't stop yelling at each other long enough to make any progress, and ultimately the only thing they can agree on is to officially sever all ties with each other. They return to their respective territories and meet with their subordinates, Clover the Clever, Private Pansy, and Smart Cookie. Now acting independently, the leaders have all come to the same conclusion, that their homelands are fucked and their only hope for survival is to find a new place to live. Fortunately, they each find a place that will be perfect for their needs. Unfortunately, they're all trying to lay claim to the same area. And as they continue fighting, this new land becomes inexplicably covered in snow as well. They take shelter in a nearby cave, but even in the face of certain doom, they still can't stop arguing over piddly little bullshit. And the coldness closes in, freezing the leaders in blocks of ice. Free from the constant bickering, Clover finally realizes what's been causing the snowstorm, spirits called Wendigos who feed on hatred. As the three assistants huddle together, preparing to meet the same fate, however, they confess that they don't actually hate each other at all. In fact, they've been so busy doing all the grunt work that they haven't had time to hate anyone except their bosses. And so, they defeat the Wendigos by opening the doorway to Kingdom Hearts, thus beginning the tyrannical rule of King Mickey and transforming this new country into the happiest place on Earth. The obvious high point of this episode is the tremendous amount of information that we get about the world and the characters. We see that Equestria Society was founded on the principles of friendship, which lends even more validity to the idea of Celestia's top student taking remedial lessons on the subject today. The way the pageant story is presented is very interesting, as we occasionally see glimpses of the stage, but most of the time is spent in flashbacks to the actual time period, with the actors standing in for the historical figures they're portraying. And the play ends with another new song, which isn't all that spectacular, but it isn't supposed to be either, as they're basically singing the equivalent of a traditional Christmas song. It has a classical sound, but it's also simple enough for a large crowd to recite easily. There are also a few neat little tidbits of information, mostly on the unicorn side, as we find out that Clover the Clever is the disciple of Star Swirl the Bearded. This is the second of three references made to the character throughout the season. The first was Twilight's costume in Luna Eclipse, and he also has a wing of the Canterlot Archives named after him in It's About Time. I would actually be very surprised if we never get to see this character at some point. It's also specifically stated that Platinum is the daughter of the Unicorn King, proving once and for all that Princess is not the highest title a member of the royal family can hold in this universe. This episode confirms that Equestria is in fact the name of this country, though a number of fans also flipped out when Chancellor Puddinghead referred to the planet and her new potential country as Earth. If I have anything to complain about, it's mainly that the episode feels a bit underwhelming, but that's only because there are so many other top-tier episodes this season. On a more objective level, I did notice a few minor inconsistencies, mostly with Fluttershy. At the beginning, she seems uncharacteristically excited, but then at the pageant, her stage fright returns. Now, this issue has come up before, and we'll later find out in Hurricane Fluttershy that it's a deeply rooted psychological problem for her. But then when the play actually starts, her stage fright is forgotten for the rest of the episode. I also have to ask if a high-ranking mage like Star Swirl knew that there were actual spirits that feed on hatred and will freeze your ass to death, then why didn't the unicorns try harder to get along? Because Platinum's a bitch. Though, even after that bit of nitpicking, I have to admit that it really says a lot about how well-constructed the episode is that I didn't even notice these problems until I started writing this review. In the end, the 
episode leaves us with a great lesson that's told on a grand scale through the play, but it's also reinforced on a more relatable level, as backstage the characters argue over whose job it is to close a window that was left open. And as ridiculous as that sounds, that's actually kind of the point. Much like the historical leaders who could have defeated the Wendigos much sooner if they'd actually worked towards solving their problem instead of getting stuck on stupid pointless posturing, our main characters leave this window open for a good 20 minutes, whereas if they'd just calmed the hell down and cooperated a bit, the whole thing would have been taken care of in a few seconds. And that's not to say that you should never fight or defend yourself, as the encounters with Nightmare Moon and Discord prior to this have demonstrated, but even in those cases where Twilight was at the center of everything, ultimately it was everyone united who saved the day. In any case, the message is clear. We're stronger together than we are separately. So keep your priorities straight, don't be a dick, don't overcomplicate things, and for crying out loud, someone close the damn window so we can all get on with our lives. Hearthswarming Eve gets a 9 out of 10.